So you don't necessarily have to do this. You can use the bottom template to set your uh, seam allowance line uh, on your leather or paper or whatever you're going to use. But if you wanted to pull the holes up through the leather, all you have to do is set the depth to cut through in Fusion 360 through both layers of the leather or this template all the way around. But it's kind of an extra step you don't really need. It's more cosmetic than anything because again, when you go to print this template, you're gonna have each one of these layers separate. So you can use the holes on the bottom one on the template to mark your leather and go from there. But if you really wanted to, you could, again, go through both layers of, of leather. Not necessary. Just cleaning up a little bit on this project. Not really anything necessarily you have to do. Just getting rid of stuff I don't need and kind of making everything look a little bit more clean. Uh, after you have this, I mean, you can pretty much just change the appearance if you want to. If this is a rendering you want to show somebody, uh, if you stick to the end of this uh, part two, you'll see another little tip that could help you make the rendering look a little bit more attractive to your customers or yourself, whoever you are presenting this to. But you can essentially make the leather any color you want. And in Fusion 360, it does have a leather section, as you can see. And when you zoom in on this, it really does look like leather. It's kind of neat. So when you go to print this or send this file to a client, they can actually see the leather and if you wanted to go a step further you can set a joint and make this wallet bend and show them the wallet in action I guess if you really wanted to but for leather you don't really tend to have any customer wanting to see that they get the idea of what they want and uh, you just draw it up like you have here now something else you can do is what I'm doing here is you can it's, it's good to separate the colors out so you can at least see the difference of the layers of the wallet so i'm not going to make the very bottom one the same color and this bottom piece here is the cash envelope uh, portion of this particular wallet so it would go underneath the one on the left there and the other side is the uh, passport side all this stuff you would write in your notes and you would also uh, show measurements in the drawing portion of Fusion 360 before you convert it to a PDF. That way you can spell out how this all gets put together when uh, you're cutting, the customer's cutting the leather or sewing. So what I'm doing here is I'm simply kind of showing how these layers would fit onto uh, the wallet itself. And again, the one with the holes in it, you can use as your guideline for the seam allowance to mark all of your stitching. But it's just that simple. And the cool thing about Fusion 360 too is when you're doing something like this, when you're moving the object, you can do point to point, or, or in this case is what I use, uh, or anything. I'm zooming in here and showing you, and it puts it right on top of where you need it. Just another cool feature in Fusion 360. I mean, just an exceptional program all the way around, but as I'm showing you here, it's great for both woodworking and leatherworking. Uh, also, you can do something. What I'm doing here is actually not right, but I'm gonna, I left it in so I could show you. You can't 
you're not able to, to change the leather color with another leather color that you already have one on because that's not how it would happen in real life. You're not going to change this brown leather to red leather. So what you have to do if you want to give it a little bit of color, like right here, you can just go to the paint and add paint to it, which is pretty cool. So you could show your client uh, different ideas that you have on, uh, in this case, the Passport Wallet. You could offer to uh, paint the edges, maybe give it a little bit of character, if you will. But just one more thing. And again, I'm showing you here, and I left this in. This is the part where I'm using leather on leather. You can't do that. So it's been a while since I've painted the edges here in leather. I've done a lot of woodwork lately, but eventually you'll see me get it right, which is when I switch over to the appearance of paint in lieu of leather, which is actually what you would do in leather. If this was like a veg tan and you were going to stain it, on the edges you're going to be painting them for the most part anyway. So it's kind of accurate in that aspect of the program.